Good afternoon and welcome. My name is Kane Thornton. I'm the Chief Executive of the Clean Energy Council and welcome uh, here this afternoon to uh, the launch of what is uh, really an Australian first, a comprehensive study into uh, battery technology, safety and standards. And uh, it's really great to see a, a packed house here. Um, hardly surprising given the level of interest in, uh, in battery storage across Australia that, that, that it is a packed house. <laughs> Uh, we've got a great, a great program um, over the next couple of hours today. Um, and before we, before we get into the substance, so just a, a few housekeeping matters. Firstly, mobile phones onto, uh, onto silent, please. Uh, emergency exits in the uh, unlikely event that we need to get out of here quickly. Uh, emergency exits are both out there and that way. Um, uh, but uh, staff will come and uh, show us the way uh, in that scenario. Let's hope that doesn't occur. Uh, and finally, um, just to let you know, the event today is being recorded. Um, so uh, if you s say something, uh, or if you in, uh, don't want your views to be shared more publicly, uh, keep them to yourself or think carefully about what you say throughout the course of the next, uh, of the next few hours. As I said, we've got a great, uh, a great program and a great lineup of speakers over the course of the next couple of hours uh, that will really delve deeply into some of the, uh, some of the opportunities, the challenges, some of the issues and the work program that needs to be undertaken to really unlock the full potential of, of battery storage in Australia. Uh, just a little bit of advertising, the Clean Energy Council, for those of you who don't know us, we are the, the peak body for the renewable energy industry and increasingly the storage sector. Uh, we do all sorts of things um, across those uh, technologies and sectors, including uh, shaping and influencing policy and regulatory frameworks and probably a topic we're going to discuss a lot today, developing standards and regulations and ultimately ensuring the integrity of uh, renewable energy and storage technologies. Uh, we've got over 400 member companies and, uh, and we oversee the accreditation of over 4,000 uh, accredited installers. We're here today um, really because uh, we, everyone in this room I think understands the massive opportunity that battery storage uh, represents for Australia and, and it's for a wide variety of reasons. Obviously uh, Australia we have a, a network that is long and thin and relatively costly. Uh, we have changing electricity consumption and demands. Um, we have a very old generation fleet that is both emissions intensive and rapidly moving beyond its, its operating life. Uh, that isn't particularly flexible um, in, its, uh, in its nature. Uh, we have a lot of remote energy demand that's currently met generally by, by exp expensive uh, diesel generation. Uh, and of course we have some of the best renewable energy resources in, in the world, uh, which is part of what's contributed to some 1.4 million houses in Australia taking up solar PV. Um, when you add all of those things together and the fact that um, Australian consumers, I think, are now much more engaged in uh, the topic of electricity, be it demand or, or indeed how they might produce their own electricity, then it's hardly surprising that there's a massive opportunity for battery storage in this country, particularly when we consider what's happening with storage technology, both uh, globally and also right here in, here in Australia. So that's really, I guess, the, the pretty exciting context. What do we need to do to, to unlock and accelerate this opportunity? A few things that we're going to delve much more deeply into over the course of the next few hours. But really, uh, firstly, in relation to uh, tariffs and the way that consumers are exposed to and can take advantage of the, the full value of the, uh, of the storage system and the way they might use it. Integrity and safety, very much a topic that we're going to focus on uh, on today in terms of insulation practices, product standards, maintenance operation and, and end of life. And I think certainly from our experience in the solar PV sector, these are absolutely critical factors that as an industry, we must uh, get ahead of the wave, we must anticipate, we must ensure that um, we have a robust framework for dealing with all of these issues um, first and foremost. Uh, demonstration, um, demonstration projects I think are critical and we're going to hear from Arena shortly in terms of some of the work that they're supporting to help to demonstrate the, the capability of technologies, how it's integrated, to identify some of the challenges and, and help to, to make progress to overcome them. And a lot of that feeds into the regulatory framework. We know we've got an energy system, an energy market and the rules and regulations 
that weren't designed for the paradigm that we're now in right now and, and are facing into the future. Uh, a very old, relatively, um, relatively mature energy system uh, and clearly there's, there's a need for, for change. And finally, and also something we'll discuss today, how do we inform and engage and educate consumers so ultimately they know what choices they're making, what questions to ask, and ultimately the products that, uh, that they're, that they're uh, purchasing. So that's probably enough for me other than to say it's, a, I guess, a really exciting time, I think, in uh, the Australian storage industry to be talking about these types of issues today. Uh, I think we really do stand at the forefront of a massive opportunity for, for battery technology in Australia that is going to truly revolutionise the, the energy sector here in Australia, and we'll hear from, from some great speakers shortly. I will just draw, finally just draw attention to the uh, Australian storage industry roadmap that we launched very much earlier in the year and is really guiding a lot of the work that you'll, that you'll hear about throughout the course of today and that's available online for anyone who hasn't seen it. Uh, I'm now going to hand over to, uh, to our first guest speaker. It is uh, Danny DeShooter, who is the uh, General Manager Strategy from ARENA and I really do want to acknowledge the, the support that ARENA has uh, provided for the entire renewable energy and storage sector in Australia and I guess particularly their support for uh, a project that the CEC has been leading over the last couple of years. You've got a postcard I think on your seat uh, with, uh, with a bit of detail about that, the Future Proofing Australia's Electricity Distribution Industry. It's a mouthful um, project um, but it's a really important project and uh, very important to the future of both renewable energy and storage in this in this country and we'll hear a little bit more about that a, a bit later from Tom Butler. So nothing more from me other than to, to welcome Danny and thanks again for ARENA and their support. Thank you, Kane. Um, it is a full house over here, and um, I was just earlier at the um, Australian Utility uh, Week up at uh, Luna Park um, here in uh, here in Sydney, and I must say that the uh, the session on intelligent metering of portable standpipes wasn't nearly as full um, as um, as this one over here. So there must be something in um, in batteries that um, that that people uh, that people like. Um, I'd like to start um, by pointing out um, Reposit Power. Um, it's a, uh, a company based in, uh, in Canberra. It's one of what I think is a, uh, an exciting company, up and coming. Um, they, they are a software company. They are not a battery company. They are a software company. Um, and uh, indeed, their grid credit system essentially allows households to play on the electricity market. Um, which is great. It um, allows them to essentially monetize the battery and their solar PV. So not only can they monitor their electricity use, um, they can also you know, shift their, um, their, their solar energy output into their battery, use it at later times, but also use that battery then play onto the market and provide network support services. Um, of course, the battery is at the heart of, um, of that, uh, that system. But um, they're not, as I said, in the business of actually installing the batteries. They leave that to others. However, they've had a number of challenges to overcome um, over the last, you know, many months um, as they um, they executed their um, their pilot scheme in uh, in Canberra. Um, for example, um, to start off with, it was actually very time consuming for them to have their imported battery system certified in uh, in Australia, and that was in stark contrast to um, the uh, time that the uh, manufacturer spent in other countries around the world to get their um, uh, system certified. Um, they also had challenges in training the electricians um, that essentially have to install what is a new to market um, uh, system. And that is not just the battery, but it's also ethernet cabling, um, you know, Wi-Fi access um, to set up um, the control systems, um, everything whilst maintaining safe, um, safe practices. Um, and they are continuously looking to improve the training that they give to electricians um, to, um, and, and to extend this thing to more installers as they increase their footprint um, beyond Canberra and, um, and into um, other states. Um, and the third um, challenge uh, that I should mention is that the bat battery system, and the one that you can see over here on the screen is a, um, a Magellan um, unit, is, as you could imagine, is pretty heavy. Um, and you know you'd be very hard pressed to put it on a one-ton ute um, that most solar installers would um, um, would have. 
um, and you know, pose quite a bit of challenges, even installing it. Um, you can see at the bottom over there, there is actually some reinforced um, concrete uh, footing that had to be erected to make sure that the thing doesn't slide away after the first heavy, um, heavy rainfall. Um, so they are one example of a project that, um, that ARENA um, supports to essentially get uh, more information about safety um, and get uh, through that first mover um, disadvantage, if you like. Um, we've been at ARENA, I think, quick to realize the value that batteries can, uh, can provide. Um, we, we think particularly that a lot of the value could be left on the table if a battery system was maximized to only its owner. Um, so we support projects like this one, for example, that is done by Ergon Energy, um, um, Ergon Retail. So um, in this pilot demonstration, um, Ergon installs and tests um, 33 um, systems in Cannonville, Toowoomba and Townsville up in, uh, in Queensland. They're a 4.9 kilowatt uh, PV system um, uh, coupled with a 12 kilowatt hour and 5 kilowatt um, uh, battery um, system. Um, and clearly such system would provide value to the to the owners, um, but in this case, um, the system is actually owned by, uh, by Ergon, and the customer just pays a, um, a fixed uh, service fee. Um, and the extra value that is provided over here is in that it allows Ergon to use that system as a virtual power plant. So you've got 33 batteries out there. There's quite a bit of um, um, uh, energy that could be provided or stored. So the use is as a virtual power plant, um, including demand management technologies, um, to essentially support the network in times of, uh, in times of needs. So they're a great way to increase, if you like, the um, the percentage of um, renewables in, uh, in, in our grids. Even when you go to the edge of the grid or when you go to constrained grid areas, um, batteries can quite successfully, uh, successfully be deployed to essentially avoid network augmentation. And we all know about the gold plating um, of, um, of our networks. So anything that we can do using renewable energy technologies to avoid some of that investment, I think, is a, um, is a good thing. Can't show you any picture of any of our, um, our projects over there. We're currently negotiating with one of them um, to, um, to get started. And then when you totally leave the grid and you go um, outside of the grid, then um, batteries are just you know, one form of, um, of storage, but quite critical in ensuring that you can increase the penetration of, um, of renewables in the, uh, in, in the system. This one over here, this schematic is one in, uh, in, in Flinders Island. Uh, it's an example where um, the batteries are integrated into a combination of solar, uh, wind, um, there is a bit of diesel um, still over there as well. There is a flywheel as well. It's got quite everything um, that, that, you can, uh, that you can get um, to um, essentially reduce the, um, what used to be 100% um, diesel usage on, the, on Flinders Island. Um, and it currently displaces about 60% of, um, of diesel use. Uh, so quite substantial. Um, innovative in the way that um, the system, as you can sort of see in the schematic over there, uh, the batteries and the control systems, they're all packed in a container and so, you know, allows for transportation and, uh, and things like that. So those are, you know, a few of the, um, the projects, if you like, that we, uh, that we support in, uh, in battery storage. Now, as some of you may, uh, may know, um, you know, who are we at, um, at ARENA? Uh, so we are a, a, a government, independent government agency um, created with the express aims of increasing the renewable energy supply in Australia, as well as to improve the and advance the renewable energy technologies. Um, we have still a one and a half billion dollar um, kitty to, um, to use to um, essentially give grants out to project proponents uh, that want to, um, to play into, into this uh, particular field. And um, what we do is we really work across the innovation chain um, of, uh, of renewable energy. So we start at the applied R&D stage, uh, not quite blue sky, but really sort of, you know, the, the, the applied um, side of R&D, and then help with the commercialization of various solutions um, to the point where they are nearly commercial. And at that very end of the, the, the scale, that's where other agencies like um, the Clean Energy Finance Corporation, for example, and other th mechanisms like the ERF, et cetera, take over up to a point where essentially the normal finance institutions like you know, big, uh, your big four banks, et cetera, can, uh, can take over. Um, we got quite a bit of a portfolio already in, uh, in battery, but we're definitely trying to round it out um, a bit more. 
Um, we're currently supporting um, three projects on um, sort of on the battery technology development as well as testing, um, which I think is uh, quite important. Um, $2.6 million of ARENA funding is, um, is going in those um, projects. We've got uh, five reports and, uh, and studies um, on our books as well. Um, if you go to our website, you can uh, read one of our studies uh, done by ACOM, which sort of looked at the whole storage market, and there's quite a big section on there on the various battery technologies and, and things like that. Um, and that's um, about 2.2 million of funding. And then we have 12 projects, um, as Kane sort of mentioned, in terms of um, demonstration projects, and that goes across a spectrum of residential, commercial, as well as utility scale um, uh, projects. And that's um, about $77 million in, uh, in arena funding um, to date. As I said, we're still um, looking to expand this, uh, this portfolio. Um, and I suppose whilst doing this or by doing this thing, we, um, we build the experience um, in the industry around safety, safely installing, operating, maintaining, and in some time, probably uh, disposing of, um, of, um, of, of uh, spent um, battery systems. So the more battery projects that we fund, the more technicians will learn how to safely install and manage these, um, these systems. Um, and um, how do we make sure that we reach, if you like, the widest audience? Well, we are uh, quite active in our knowledge sharing activities, so quite often we will get our proponents to, um, to come together and share their lessons learned um, uh, amongst each other, as well as to the next wave of projects um, that are out there, um, as well as you know, producing the sort of the classical reports and lessons learned that we put on our website for, um, uh, for people to, um, to learn about. Um, as well as speaking at events like uh, like this one, um, so um, that's what we're, that's what we do. Um, I think the report that is being presented here today is um, is important in that it identifies um, for the first time the status, the potential gaps, as well as what we think some of the requirements are to ensure the safe installation, operation, and uh, disposal or recycling of um, of battery systems, and. Um, um, we're very keen to hear on uh, the exact recommendations um, that sit in there. I've had a quick look through the uh, executive summary, uh, summary so far, and I think um, there's quite a few of these recommendations in there that might go a very long way in essentially smoothing out what is projected to be a fairly rapid uptake of, um, of batteries in, uh, in, in Australia. And we all know um, that, you know, only one or two bad events need to happen for an industry to um, to get a, a pretty bad rap and to uh, to shake consumer confidence. So hopefully by this work um, that um, that might uh, not occur. Um, we should of obviously of course also be you know careful to um, um, to not over regulate in uh, in an industry that is um, that is new um, and make sure that any regulation is indeed evidence based um, and not based upon any sort of myths or um, or rumors. So. Um, that would be sort of my little, you know, warning, if you like, to uh, to the regulators in uh, in in this uh, in this space. I think the solar industry, uh, for one, is one that is presently fairly well uh, regulated, operates um, uh, quite well, and obviously CSC plays a very important role in uh, in doing that. And so focusing on um, the quality of the merchandise as well as the competence of the installers is indeed a, a very worthwhile um, um, endeavor. But um, I won't really go into detail. I'll let um, uh, Sam take you through the, uh, the findings of, um, of that report. Um, and um, thank you for that. Great. Thanks very much, Danny, and uh, thanks again to Arena for your for your I think vision and and support for for this sector.